Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise his name. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody <laughs> praise his name. What has he brought you through? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Praise his name. I just want to first give honor to my pastor. My pastor, it seems like all my life since I was 23, and I'm not 23. Uh, pastor Evans, so I'm very grateful for him, for Dr. Lois Evans, my, my heroine, my mentor. I thank you. And Crystal, wow, you grew up. <laughs> you're, you're, you're only 27, yeah, all right. A mighty woman of God, thank you for having me. Um, let's talk to the Lord for a minute. Ah, oh, Daddy. Woo. Thank you, Father. Bless your name, Daddy. Lord, you are mighty. And you love us so much. So now, Lord, I pray that, uh, that you'd meet us here. I pray, Lord, that you would speak and that we would hear. The women here tonight didn't come just to be coming. To get off work and come here just to drive somewhere and meet some people, Lord. We came to meet you. We came to hear from you because life is not easy. And so, Lord, we need you, and I pray that you have presenced yourself here through your word. Let us know that you love us, and let us know what is the hope of our calling. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, when I was in college, it was about midway through my first year in college, and and I knew everything then, you know. I'm a freshman, I'm off, I'm at college, and I know it all. So my father was a pastor, and, um, and I thought I had a word of wisdom. So I called my dad, and I said, hey, dad. And he's like, hi, how are you doing? How's college going? Good. I said, dad, you know what I learned? He said, what did you learn? I said, you have to work like it all depends on you and pray like it all depends on God. And he's like, Kari, it all depends on God. And I said, but daddy, you don't understand. You know what? You know, I, I, you taught me to work hard, right? Okay, so this is the way it is. You have to work like it all depends on you, and then you pray like it all depends on God. And he said, no, 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 Kari, you, you don't get it. It all depends on God. And it took me so long to get that. Because I used to have, before I really, really came to know the Lord, I used to have this issue, this problem. And my problem was I was always concerned about what my life was going to turn out to be. I was always like, you know, I got to work hard. I got to do this because I want my life to be this way. And if I don't do this, then that's not going to happen. If I don't do this, then that's going to happen. So, this, you know, and I had it all kind of in my brain, everything that I had to do to, to, to be successful in life. And so, so until I got saved, I had that thing going on. And then after I really came to understand who, who God was, I, I realized my dad was right. It does all depend on God. But let me ask you a question. I mean, I know you're sitting here listening to me, but I want to ask you a question. How many of you got a, a calendar or a day timer or something like that? Any, anybody in here got one of those? And, and, and you got that day runner. And you ever find out that the day runner is running you? Yeah, that's right. yeah that, that your, your, you know, your day timer is timing you out, right? And, and so I'm, 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 I want to uh, hear from the Lord about this issue, about who is really responsible for our life. Like, and what is it supposed to be? You know, sometimes I run out of time at the end of the day. Has that ever happened to you? Like, you had all this stuff on your calendar, and then, and then the day is over, and, and something's still on your calendar? <laughs> You're like, but I didn't get to that. So that goes tomorrow morning, first thing. And then I wonder if the Lord put that stuff on our calendar. 
Could it be that sometimes our calendar is our idol? Could it be that sometimes we have these goals and objectives and that's our idol? That's what we're really worshiping. And we say, Lord, our time is our time. This is my time. And you know what, Lord, thank you for this time. But I'm I'm, going to allow Sunday morning and Wednesday night and two hours split up over a couple days. I might miss something. And that's your time. This is my time. Let's see how the Lord thinks about this and see if he has a solution for some of the anxiety that we feel, some of the pain that we feel, some of the discomfort that we feel. Let's see what he has to say in Psalm 23, verses 2 and 3. Thank you, Lord. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The scripture begins in verse 2, he maketh me. And, and, and again, we see this relationship in verse 2 and 3. It, it, in verse 2, it starts, he, and then you got maketh, then me. And verse 3, he restoreth my. So it's still that continued kind of emphasis on the relationship between God and us, right? And so we're, we're thinking in terms of relationship, but we're thinking like we're sheep here. And, 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 and as sheep, there are some things that we have to be made to do. Like I have a, a granddaughter. I got one granddaughter, one on the way. Praise Jesus. I love it. Yes. Send her home. She's a little terror. She comes to my house, and she bends the blinds, and, you know, and then she gets the stuff out. And every time, she breaks at least one thing, you know. She's 18 months, and she's looking for stuff to break. And, and I hear the crack, and I was like, yep, that's today. <laughs> We're going to see what happens tomorrow, right? But she's, she's really busy. She's really active. Uh, her name is Ari Rain Coulter, in case anybody wanted to know. And, uh, but she's fun, and she's just active. And so when she comes to my house, she's going and going and going. She'll come in the morning, and her mom would be there. And her mom would think, as grandmother, I'm supposed to do stuff, which I don't want to do. And so then she, she'll like, okay, you, you know, Ari's running around and everything. And she's just going in, and she dumps my purse upside down, and she gets in the strawberries and wipes it on my chair. Whatever Ari Rain wants to do, that's what she does, right? And she is so busy, and she is so active. But then I notice something. After a few hours, she starts to whine, and she starts to rub her head right here, that little ball spot that she's already rubbed in. And when she starts to whine and rub her head, I mean, she's sleepy. But do you think Ari wants to go down for a nap? Oh, no. No, she doesn't want to go down for a nap. And so her mom will say, well, let's change your diaper. And you change your diaper, and you get the bottle, and you get ready to put her down for a nap. And she is fussing and whining and complaining the whole time, right? And then she finally she's like, oh, okay. And then she, her eyes are closing. And she goes up and puts her in the crib, and Ari falls asleep. That's what the picture is here. He maketh me to lie down. He, he knows when you're tired. He knows when you're sleepy. He knows you've been going and going and going and going, and you have just about gone. Have you ever, like, pushed that gas pedal down, and there wasn't no more gas in you? And you just, like, put, like I know I can push through, I can push through, and you're about to walk, fall asleep right then? Because you're so tired. And the Lord says, you know what? Time for you to rest. Now, if you're a a, a type A person, raise your hand if you're type A. Type A person, you don't want to go to sleep. You want to keep going and tearing up stuff. You know, you want to keep doing stuff to keep, keep life active and happy. And you got your agenda and you got this to do and you got that to do and you got this to do and that to do. And it, you, you don't want to go to sleep. And so what he says is, you know what, you need to rest. You need to lie down. Now, what does that look like, ladies? What that looks like is closed doors. 
Yeah, what that looks like is you're trying to get something done and you're trying to get something done and you're kind of trying to get it done and all of a sudden you look up and say, I have been trying so hard. I'm stuck in third gear. I don't know what to do, what else to do. What else can I do? I've done everything I know how to do. I've done it all. I've, I've worked, I've studied, I've, I've, I've done my, my homework on it and, and I've written and, and I've done everything that I know how to do, Lord, and you are not opening this door. Why come you're not opening this door? You said I was getting have anything I ask for, and I'm asking. Yeah, I'm asking. I ask. You said, yeah, everything in you is yes and amen. Why am I? Amen. Because I don't already said yes. Mm-hmm. And, and nothing happens, and you just got to sit down and wait. You ever been there? Am I the only, you know? Yeah. He maketh me lie down. When sheep are out and, and they're wandering, they're wandering, and particularly in this passage, we're talking about a particular area where sheep wander. And it's, it's very, very mountainous. It's very rocky, right? It's, it's very difficult. And so when you see this picture in the scripture of the sheep lying down in green pastures, this pasture had to be prepared. There was, there was some, some way that this place was green when everything else was rocky, and the scripture is saying, look, look, at, look at what God is doing. It, where you're laying down right now, it might not be where you want to be, but you're not starving. Yes, it might not be where you want to be, but you got clothes on your back. Yes. You got somewhere to live. It might not have been the last house, but it's this house. It's this apartment. You live in somewhere. Yes. This is your green pasture. This is where God has placed you. And look, um, in this scripture, if you were to look at the scripture and you look at the environment, you would see that this green pasture where you're laying down is surrounded by rocky land. It's surrounded by rocky roads. It would be sun beating down. This was a desert, and then it would be a green place in the desert. It wasn't like everything was green. Hello, somebody. Is everything green in your life? I'm telling you right now, everything green ain't green in my life. So he's saying, you know what, everything don't have to be perfect for you to lie down. Everything doesn't have to be right for you to take a rest, for you to get off your feet. He's saying, you know, this part right here is green. Now lay down in that. And, it was, you know, but sometimes what happens is we're looking around and we're looking at the rocks. And we can't rest in the green pasture because we're looking at the rocks. And we're thinking, hey, I'm going to have to walk on those rocks when I finish laying down. <laughs> lay down when he tells you to lay down because that's not the end of it. Look at the next part of the scripture. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Well, you're not laying down no more. You had a period where you were laying down. You had a period where, where you could just kind of chill. But then you had to get up because he has somewhere he's taking you. The scripture says he leads me. He leads me somewhere, and I'm following him wherever he leads me, right? So, so we got this picture of laying down, and then we got this picture of getting up. And if there are any P, B people in the room, you don't want to get up. You know, you laying down, and the Lord said, okay, it's time to go. And you're like, but why though? <laughs> this is a green pasture right here. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to sit right here. And he said, no, 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 no. See, see there, there, there are, there's, there's a process. This is a journey. So there will be seasons when you're laying down in green pasture. Enjoy that season because it's not going to last. He's going to get you up, and then he's going to lead you somewhere. But... The nice thing to know about is where he's leading you is good too. Like where you are right now is good, and the, and the still water is that way, and it's some rocks between here and the still water, right? And the still water is there. It's quiet. That's what it means, still. The water's quiet. You can go. You can enjoy yourself, and you can drink, and it's going to be wonderful. But you got to go through the rocks. See? It's interesting how we can get so comfortable in our green pastures, like, like when you get ready to retire. <laughs> You're like, oh, green. But you know what? You stay there, you'll die right in the pasture, right in your comfortable spot. 
right in that sweet spot, right in that place where you're like, oh, Lord, this is so good. <sighs> you'll die right there because you'll die of thirst. We need purpose. We need to have something to do next. We need that. And so, so what we have to do is say, yes, Lord, to walking across the rocks, walking in the desert, walking in the heat. Yes, Lord, I will do this because I know that you are leading me somewhere so good. Sheep have to drink a half, a half gallon to four gallons of water a day. If they stay there, they're not going to make it. So the Lord leads them to still water. I'm so thankful. Like, you know, I've been through a, a very difficult patch in, in my own life. And, and, and I'm thankful for what God did because I was thinking, like, right in the midst of the difficulty, I was having a good time. I enjoy life in the midst of difficulty. Can you enjoy your life in the midst of difficulty? I would suggest to you that the scripture then teaches us that God is the one that makes you lie down. He maketh me lie down. Uh, God prepares the place for you to lie, lie down in green pastures, and then God moves you on. He, 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 he leads you beside the still waters. But I tell you what, I like verse 3. He restoreth my soul. Have you ever been dry? Have you ever been in the situation where you didn't even want to get up out of bed in the morning because your soul needed so badly? to be restored. Sometimes life will get you in that place where, where you're struggling with this and struggling with that and the job is not right, the supervisor's not right, your kids are not right, your husband's not right, ain't nobody right. <laughs> ain't nothing right. Your money's funny. You're like, Lord, what is this? What kind of mess is this for me to be in and I'm serving you? People are coming against me and I'm serving you. People are talking about me like a dog and I'm serving you. And people are treating me badly and I'm serving you. And people are saying false things against me and I'm serving you. And, and I don't have the money that I thought I needed and I'm still serving you. And I don't have the comfort in my heart that I thought this person would provide and I'm still serving you. And that person's being wicked and they seem to be doing good, but I'm still serving you. Lord, I'm serving you. I'm serving you. Do you see? I'm serving you. And you get tired. And you say, Lord, what is this about? And then you, you rest. And you think about God. You think about what he has already done. You think about what he has already brought you through. You think about that last time that you didn't have a good job. And that last supervisor you couldn't deal with. And that last time your home was in a, in, in a bad situation. And that last time that your kids were going crazy and you were on your knees. You think about that last time and you say, Lord, I know you. You are my shepherd. And you already have led me into some really comfortable places in the midst of a desert, and you already have done uh, what I needed to have done. Lord, I trust you now. I, I'm trusting you by faith. I'm not trusting you by sight. I'm not trusting you because of what I see. I'm not trusting you because things are going my way. I'm not trusting you for any of that. Lord, I'm trusting you because you're God, and you're God all by yourself, and I know your character, and I know your nature, and I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. I know that even though everybody else might forsake me, you won't. I know that about you, Lord. I can rest in that because that's your word and that's my experience. And if I wonder about my experience, I can turn to this person here and I can turn to that one there. And I say, can you tell me about Jesus? Can you tell me something Jesus has done for you? And I, and I know I can get a witness. And if I can't get a witness right then, I can open my Bible to the story of Mary and Martha. And I can see that there's a witness. Because they'll say, Jesus waited while my brother died. What was he doing? We have served him. We have done everything we needed to do. And look at this. Our brother is dead. He's dead. He's dead. And then Jesus walks on the scene. He says, show me where you laid it. Anybody got something dead and, and, and you want 
Jesus to come and look and see where you laid it. Hallelujah, show me where you laid him. And Jesus looked at that situation and turned it around and what? Their soul was restored. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but what about Lazarus? He's the one dead. Have you, has that been your experience where you said, Lord, I'm dead. This is it. I am in pain. I'm done. Stick a fork in me. It's over. I, I, I ain't got nothing else. That's it. I'm through. I'm done. So Lazarus, if I can't get a witness in my own life, if I can't get a witness from you, I could ask Lazarus. And Lazarus said, yep, I was dead, but I ain't dead now. Oh, yeah, I'm up now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, but let me call another witness. Peter, Peter, come here, Peter, tell me about it. Peter said, yep, I was a scoundrel, boy. I, I, I abandoned Jesus in his time of need. I denied him three times. I was so disgusted with myself. I was so disgusted with my own sin. I was so disappointed in myself. I said, forget it. I'm going to go and fish again. And I, while I was out there fishing, and I saw Jesus on the shore. Jesus called me, and he said, you ain't done yet. Yeah. I'm telling somebody here, you're not done yet. Yeah. You might have messed up, but you're not done yet. You might have gotten hurt, but you're not done yet. You might have a past, but honey, you got a present. Yeah. And I tell you this, you got a future. Yeah. God is good, and, and there's a testimony that he will restore your soul. Job, tell me about Jesus. Tell me about God. Tell me about your experience. And he said, you know what? I was, I was done too. I was tired of it. My wife wasn't right. My situation wasn't right. My money wasn't right, and my body wasn't right. Wasn't nothing right. But I'm going to tell you, when I approached God on his terms, he restored my soul. My sisters, he will restore your soul. You might have to go through a period. You might have to wait. Enjoy the wait. The restoration is coming. He restores my soul. But let's, let's look at the last part of this verse because I got 20 minutes. I got to finish. So, uh, the last part of this verse, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Mm. Okay, so uh, on the mountains, so the context of this is, is, is mountains and, and desert and that kind of thing. And so if you had sheep, if you were a shepherd, then what you would do is you would lead them around a particular path. Now, there would be more than one path. Let's take this a, da a mountain, and this is a mountain right here, and this goes over right there. And so there might be a path right there, and a path right there, and a path right there, and a path right there. It's all these paths, and the Lord is saying here, he will lead you on the right path. The right path for you. What does that mean for you? That means that you're not in competition with anybody else. Because he will lead you in the right path. He will lead you the way that you need to go. So if he assigns you that path, you're not in competition with the person in this path or that path. Or, you know, it, it's, it's, not, it's, it's paths of righteousness. And the Lord, this is what's nice about this, guys. This is what's nice about this. That the Lord is the one that will lead you. On the path. He will lead you. He will lead. Who will lead you? The Lord will. Who will lead you? The Lord will lead you. What does that mean for you? That you do not have to worry about your path. All you have to do is follow the leader. All you have to do is keep calm and rest. There's an external rest. Let me talk about this. And then there's an internal rest, right? So externally, you can have something where you're resting, but, but you got a restless heart, just like some people have a restless leg syndrome, the, their leg moving all the time. The leg, You can have a heart that's moving all the time. And you will be tired if your heart is moving all the time. Because there's no rest internally. But he's saying, you know what, the reason that you can rest internally is because I got this. I know what I'm doing. All you have to do is follow me. And I will lead you in the paths of righteousness. Well, Lord, how do I know that you're really going to lead me? How do I know that you're really going to do this? And the Lord says, you know, I'm doing it for my namesake. Have you ever uh, experienced me betray my own namesake? 
Uh, you, you are mine, and I'm, I'm going to lead you into the place that I promised you. Why? For my name's sake. And I'm not going to let my name's sake go down. And, and so you don't really have to worry. You don't have to fret. All you have to do is follow. Follow me, and I will show you the way to go. Follow me, and you will get there. Wherever your there is, you'll get there. You don't have to worry about it. Wherever your there is, you'll get there if you follow him. Follow the Lord, and he will do this for his name's sake. Lecrae is a, a Christian artist. Some of y'all know him, Lecrae. He's a Christian rap artist, and he was telling this story in 2015 at a Passion Conference. He said, I went to this store in Hollywood, right? And he said, I went to this store in Hollywood, and I just wanted a T-shirt, just wanted a plain T-shirt. So I went in the store in Hollywood, and I was going to get a plain T-shirt, and, 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 and I looked on the rack, and, and I pulled out this white cotton T-shirt, and I was going to buy it, and then I... Looked at that price tag, and price tag says six hundred ninety-five dollars for a plain white T-shirt. So he's like, "This is a plain white T-shirt. Why is this T-shirt six hundred and ninety-five dollars?" So he went to the the, the salesperson. And he said, "You know what? This is this T-shirt says six hundred ninety-five dollars." And she said, "Yeah." And, and he said, "Well, if I put it on, it's gonna heal all my diseases or something." <laughs> He said, no, it's, it's not going to heal your diseases. He said, well, if I put it on, am I going to get some superpowers or something? $695 worth of superpower. She said, no, you're not going to get no superpowers putting it on. He said, well, why in the world is this plain white T-shirt $695? She said, because of the label. It's got a label on it of a person who has integrity. It's got a label on it of a person who is admired. It has a, the label on it of a person who can't be beat at what they do. They're T-shirt makers, and they make great T-shirts. And it's just because this looks like a plain white T-shirt, just because it seems like a plain white T-shirt, that don't mean nothing because what's important is that it's got a label. And I want to tell you something. You got a label. Hallelujah, you have a label. The Lord has put a label on you. If you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are walking around with a label life. And so your life is worth something, not because you have or haven't messed up, not because of what you have accomplished or haven't accomplished. No, your wife, life is worth something. It's worth a lot because of the person who put a label on you. And your life is going where God says it's going. You don't have to hustle. You don't have to hassle. You don't have to worry. And you don't have to fret because God says rest. Keep calm. Keep calm. Follow me. Because your life is labeled, and I will do what I said I will do for my name's sake. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're labeled. We thank you that you're God and you're the best designer there is. There is no better designer than you. There's no one that can do what you can do. And so, Lord, we thank you that you will fulfill what you said you would do. You will call us into your presence. You will allow us to rest in your presence. You will allow us to rejoice in your presence. You will allow us to lay down in your presence. Lord, praise your name because you do give us grassy places to lay down in the midst of a desert. And, Lord, thank you that you give us water to drink when everything else is dry. So we praise you, Lord, that we will be restored, that we will be restored, that we can keep calm and rest. In Jesus' name, amen. We know that um, there is at least a few people in here who need some rest, or you need some refreshment, or you need some restoration, and so we're just going to take a minute to tell the Lord that, because there's nothing wrong with admitting that you need a patch. <laughs> that you need some still water, or that you need him for his name's sake to grant restoration to you. So if you are desperate for Jesus, just take a minute and tell him so. This is the end of the year. This is the end of the year. Your holy presence living in me. You are my daily bread. You are my 
I'm alone. 